Inspire Classic Slate Roofing provides the homeowner the splendor, elegance, and quality of a traditional slate roof, but without the problems of traditional slates. A uniquely engineered composite roofing system, Inspire Classic Slate stands the test of time better than natural slate. It will not break or delaminate, weighs only one quarter as much, and is virtually maintenance free. Inspire Classic Slate offers a Class A fire rating, a Class 4 impact rating, 110 mile per hour wind uplift protection, and is virtually maintenance free. And unlike natural slate, Inspire Classic Slate comes with a transferable limited lifetime warranty. For the contractor and installer, Classic Slate has been designed and engineered to assure a fast and easy installation. By following these simple steps, you will provide a finished product that's not only beautiful, but also provides the home with the most durable protection available. Classic slate roofing is installed using traditional roofing methods and tools. The slates can be fastened with hammer and nails or with pneumatic nail guns. They can be cut with a utility knife or a standard circular saw. You'll also need a tape measure, a pry bar, tin snips, and a chalk line. Note, only use blue chalk, never use red chalk. Classic slate can be installed with exposures of 6 inches to 7 and 1 half inches on roof pitches of 512 and greater. For pitches of 312 to 512, the maximum exposure is 6 inches. Preparation The roof substrate should be prepared as in any roofing job. Make sure that all previous roofing materials, if any, are removed down to the substrate. The area must be flat, smooth, sound, and clean. Examine the roof sheathing, verifying that sheathing joints are supported by framing and blocking or by metal clips. Verify that the substrate is properly sloped for drainage, and proper provisions have been made for flashings and roof penetrations. All flashings and penetrations must be in place before installation of the slates. The slates must be properly stored in their original packaging. Use protective coverage over all pallets while being temporarily stored on site, as the tiles have a cambered design to ensure that maximum pressure is applied to the leading edge when installed. So it's important to always store them on the original pallets and on a flat surface. Never double stack the pallets. As with any roofing installation job, work should be performed in a safe, professional manner using all applicable safety practices and codes. Note that the slates can be slippery under certain conditions. Perform your work only when weather conditions permit. The roof slates must be conditioned at a temperature of at least 45 degrees Fahrenheit for 24 hours. Slates may be installed in temperatures as low as 32 degrees Fahrenheit, but must be hand fastened. The use of a nail gun at temperatures below 45 degrees Fahrenheit will result in cracking tile. Install underlayment and flashing following the manufacturer's installation requirements and comply with all local building codes. Remember, classic slate roofs last a very long time. Be sure to use building materials that last as long as the roofing tiles. Nails should be stainless steel, hot dip galvanized, or copper. Flashings should be copper, aluminum, or steel. Use fasteners that are compatible with the metals in the roof so as to avoid stains from galvanic corrosion. Underlayment In areas where the average winter temperature drops below 25 degrees Fahrenheit, a self-adhering ice and water barrier should be installed. The barrier should overlap the drip edge and metal flashings on the eave. It should extend a minimum of 24 inches beyond the interior wall and 36 inches for all valleys, rakes, and roof penetrations. Be sure to follow all manufacturer installation recommendations and observe your local building codes when installing the ice and water barrier. Next, install a single layer of ASTM D226 30-pound felt underlayment on all parts of the roof deck 
not covered by the self-adhering ice and water barrier. Install the felt perpendicular to the roof slope in parallel courses. Top lap the edges of the felt over the ice and water barrier by at least three inches. Side lap the ends of the felt by at least six inches. Top lap each additional course of felt underlayment by three inches and side lap when needed by a minimum of six inches. Tack down the underlayment with the appropriate fasteners. When underlayment is applied to these standards, the roof will achieve a Class C fire rating. If a Class A fire rating is desired, a single layer of MB Technologies Layfast TU35 underlayment must be installed to cover the entire roof, following the manufacturer's instructions. Additional peel and stick underlayment should be applied according to local building codes prior to laying down the TU35. Starter and First Course Classic slate tiles are fastened to the roof substrate with two nails. The nails must be placed in the two clearly marked spots or targets on each tile and must penetrate the roof decking by at least three quarters of an inch. Be sure to avoid over or under penetration of the fasteners. Improper fastening voids the warranty and can compromise the roof system. Start by placing the starter pieces so that they extend no more than one and one half inches beyond the eave drip edge. Nail them in place, holding a gap between starter tiles of approximately one quarter inch. Install the first course of slates, making sure that they are even with the butt edge of the starter course. The joints between the starter pieces and the first course should be a minimum of two inches, so that the nails are covered by the next course and that there are no through joints from roof surface to underlayment. When the course reaches the opposite gable edge, cut the last tile vertically to achieve a width that will result in a straight finished edge. Cut the inside of the tile, that is the side away from the roof edge, and fasten it down maintaining the quarter inch gap spacing. Straight Courses Classic slate tiles can be installed as straight courses or as staggered courses. If you desire straight courses, start by striking parallel horizontal chalk lines at the desired exposure level, beginning at the top of the first course of slates. These lines will be your guide to ensure that the slates are installed straight and uniformly. Exposure can range from 6 inches to a maximum of 7 and one half inches when installing straight courses on roof slopes greater than 512. 6 inch exposures must be used for slopes less than 512 down to a 312 pitch. Note that there are also 6, 6.5, 7 and 7.5 inch exposure marks on each tile. When you place the marks on top of the previous tiles, you will also maintain the proper exposure. However, installing to a chalk line is the preferred method. Continue placing slates horizontally. Center each new slate by using the molded center mark located at the top of each tile to line up over the joint in the preceding course. Continue placing the courses vertically, starting each new course on the appropriate intervals. Staggered Courses Classic slate tiles can also be installed in staggered courses. Lay down the starter pieces and first course just as you normally would. Strike parallel horizontal chalk lines at six and one half inch intervals, beginning at the top of the first course of slates. These lines will be your guide to ensure that the slates are installed straight and uniformly. Six and one half inches is the maximum exposure when installing staggered courses. Now start the second course of slates. The top of the first slate in the second course should be placed on the chalk line. The next slate in the course should be placed one inch below the chalk line. 
Continue placing the slates horizontally, centering each new slate over the joint of the preceding course. Alternate the slates, placing one on the chalk mark and the next one one inch below the chalk mark. When the course reaches the opposite gable edge, cut the last tile vertically to achieve a width that will result in a straight finished edge. Cut the inside of the tile, that is, the side away from the roof edge. Continue placing slates vertically, aligning the top of each new slate with the next chalk line or one inch below the chalk line. Valleys There are two types of valley configuration you can use, open and closed. An open valley design may be appropriate if the roof is subject to snow, ice, and debris, as the wider spacing helps to keep the valley clear. If climatic conditions or building codes require it, install a full-length, 36-inch wide, self-adhering ice and water shield centered on the valley. When using an open valley design, a single diverter W flashing should be used. Install the valley flashing using metal cleats on 24-inch centers. Overlap the flashing by at least 8 inches and set the joints in sealant. The trimmed edges of each slate should extend 4 inches over the valley metal. When installing the slates over the valley flashing, be sure to avoid nailing through the underlying metal. If you use a closed valley design, a single diverter W flashing or a standing eye seam flashing should be used. Again, install a full length, 36 inch wide self adhering ice and water shield centered on the valley. Install the valley flashing using metal cleats on 24 inch centers. Overlap flashing sections by at least 8 inches and set the joints in sealant. The trimmed edges of each slate should extend over the valley metal. They should butt up against the raised portion of the flashing. Flashings Flashings should be used around all roof penetrations, such as walls, chimneys, dormers, vent pipes, or skylights. Apron or wall-to-roof flashing is used when a roof terminates to a wall, causing a course to be cut and face-nailed. Place the horizontal part of the apron flashing over the top of the slates and fasten the vertical part of the flashing to the wall. It will be overlapped by the siding or counter cap flashing. The end of the apron flashing should extend beyond the wall and be finished off with a step flashing which is appropriately sealed at the corners. Step flashings should be used when a pitched roof comes into contact with a vertical wall. Individual pieces of metal flashing should be installed at the end of each shake to prevent water intrusion. They should extend under the uppermost row of the roof slate. The vertical leg of the metal should be turned up a minimum of 4 inches and extend 4 inches on the slate with an optional 3 quarter inch hem. Step flashings should have a minimum length of 10 inches and must overlap a minimum of 2 inches. Penetrations through the roof deck, such as vents or pipes, require a flat flange around the penetration. The flashing should be placed above the penetration and overlap the lower course of slates. Capmaster decorative vent stack covers can be added to cover the vent or pipe. The bottom flange of the stack cap is marked with lines that indicate where to trim so as to match the roof pitch. Hips and Ridges Classic slate preformed pieces are used to finish off hips and ridges. Start by chalking a straight line. Place one piece of preformed hip and ridge slate at the eave and one near the peak to act as guides to mark the beginning and end of the line. Snap the chalk line at the edge of the slate on the top and bottom pieces. This will help keep the hip straight in the event of a crooked underlying structure. Install the preformed hip slates from the eave to the peak using a maximum exposure of 7 and 1 half inches. Fasten the hip slates with two fasteners, one on each side,
nailing in the designated target area. The fasteners must penetrate the deck by a minimum of three quarters of an inch. Ridge Vents One square foot of net free area is required for every 300 square feet of attic floor space for a balanced ventilation system split between the ridge and soffit. One square foot of ventilation for every 150 square feet of attic floor space is required if this balance cannot be achieved. Ventilation is necessary for the extended life of the roof system. An unvented roof or improperly vented roof will void the warranty of the classic slate roof system. Ridgemaster Plus ridge vents can be used on either ridgepole construction roofs or truss construction roofs. In either case, start at one end of the ridge and install each section of the vent with the embossed arrows pointing in the direction of assembly. Each new section clips into place with the preceding sections. Use 3-inch roofing nails to fasten the vent through the top course and into the roof substrate. The nails should be placed through the pre-existing holes along the outside edges of the vent. Finally, install the preformed ridge slates along the top of the vent. Push the preformed slate piece down to conform to the profile of the roof line and vent. Use 3 inch roofing nails and nail through the pre marked target on the slates. The nails must penetrate the roof substrate by at least 3 quarters of an inch. Visit InspireRoofing.com for more information, including additional Inspire Roofing products. All products are backed by a limited lifetime guarantee.